بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه الطيبين الطاهرين السلام عليكم my dearest brothers and sisters and welcome praise be to Allah we thank Allah and we seek his good guidance we praise him we ask that Allah protect us from the evil of our souls and from our bad deeds. Whoever Allah guides, no one leads him astray. And whoever he leads astray, no one can guide him. I testify that there is no God but Allah himself. Allah has no partner. He has no similar, he has no opposite, he has no equivalent, he has no organ, he has no appearance, he has no image, he has no form and he has no place. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he does not resemble the creation in any way whatsoever. Allah exists without a place and is not in every place. Dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, I testify that our master and our beloved, the eminent, our guide, the apple of our eye, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, is his slave and his messenger, the one who he elected. The Prophet وسلم, conveyed the message. He did what he was charged with. He counseled the community. May Allah reward him for us with the best of what he rewarded one of his prophets. Eid is a special day, a day overflowing with blessings and mercy celebrated by all Muslims around the world as an indication of their thankfulness to Allah, the creator of the universe. We are on a blessed day and blessed occasion, the occasion of Eid al-Fitr, the occasion of joy, where the Muslims express their joy and their happiness, not for a worldly matter, Rather, for completing a whole month in obedience to Allah Ta'ala. For one whole month, the Muslim spent the whole day from dawn break until sunset in an act of obedience to Allah Ta'ala. For one whole month, he spent the whole day from the dawn break until sunset in an act of obedience, fasting for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala meant in the ayah, which means, say, let them rejoice in the bounty and mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is better for them than what they collect. The month of Ramadan has passed away so quickly and it has left many hearts saddened and with a void. I pray that we all benefited ourselves in this month and inshallah continue to benefit ourselves. Ramadan is the ninth month of the Islamic calendar and it's the best of the months. Similarly, Friday is the best day of the week and the day of Arafah is the best day of the year and Laylatul Qadr is the best night of the year. Ramadan is the month of mercy, forgiveness and salvation from hellfire. It was mentioned in the hadith that the first third of Ramadan are the days of mercy from Allah. 
The second third are the days of forgiveness from Allah. And the last third is salvation from hellfire. A rayyan, a gate of paradise. Paradise has eight different gates. Paradise has wide walls surrounding it. Amongst the gates of paradise, there is one called a rayyan. On the day of judgment, the Muslims who used to fast in this life will be asked to enter paradise through it. After they all enter through it, that gate will be closed and no one else shall pass through it after that. Ramadan is an opportunity for a lot of reward. My dearest brothers and sisters, the reward of every good deed is multiplied by 10 up to 700 times, subhanAllah. However, the reward of fasting done in sincerity will be multiplied by as many times as Allah wills. For example, more than 700 times. And if a person fasts the whole month for the sake of Allah, it is possible, it is possible that all of their previous sins would be forgiven. And I pray that we are amongst those whose sins have been forgiven. Fasting in the month of Ramadan is amongst the greatest of obligations and is very rewardable. It's known by necessity that it is an obligation to fast during the month of Ramadan. Allah revealed in Ayah 183 of Surah Al-Baqarah, Surah 2, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu kutiba alaykum usuyam kama kutiba ala alladheena min qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon which means O oh you who believed fasting has been made obligatory upon you just as it was made obligatory upon those nations of the prophets before you since the time of Prophet Adam salam, so that through fasting you would become pious in other words to do the obligations and stay away from the sins fasting Ramadan is amongst the greatest obligations and missing one fast without an excuse is an enormous sin deserving of punishment in hellfire. Fasting Ramadan was made obligatory on this nation in the second year after the Hijrah, which means our beloved Prophet Muhammad وسلم, fasted it nine times before he وسلم, passed away at the age of 63. Now, previous nations, since the time of Prophet Adam salam, were obligated to fast during specific times. Fasting the whole month of Ramadan is specific to this nation. Fasting by foregoing the desires provides training for the people to become people of taqwa, piety, which means pious people who fulfill the obligations and avoid the sins. Imam Muslim and others narrated that the Prophet وسلم, said, Buni al Islamu ala khams, shahadati Allah ilaha illallah, wa anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh, wa iqami swalah. This means the greatest matters in Islam are five. To testify that nothing deserves to be worshipped except Allah. 
and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is the slave and messenger of Allah to perform the obligatory prayers, to give zakah, to perform hajj and to fast the month of Ramadan. Ramadan is a month of great reward and an opportunity to seek forgiveness for one's sins. So one should put extra effort in doing good deeds such as learning and teaching the religious knowledge and donating one's wealth for the sake of Allah as well as asking Allah for forgiveness. The Prophet ﷺ mentioned that during Ramadan the doors of paradise are open, the doors of hell are closed and the heads of the devils are chained. The one who doesn't spend their breaths in matters that benefit will end up wasting their time in matters that do not benefit. And we know subhanAllah in this day and age with so many media outlets time can be wasted very easily. The Prophet sallallahu said giving a person enough to break their fast for this will earn you the reward promised by the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he said man fattara swa'iman kana lahu mithlu ajrihi ghayra annahu la yanqusu min ajrihi swa'im shay'a which means whoever whoever gives a fasting person what he can break his fast with will have a reward like his, except that nothing will be taken away from the reward of the one who fasts, subhanAllah. It's even, it's even more rewardable to teach a person about the basics of belief. It's mentioned that the one who teaches the basics of belief to someone would have a reward greater than of performing 100,000 sunnah rak'ahs and greater than the reward of performing 100 optional hajjs and greater than the reward of finishing the recitation of the Qur'an 100 times. And the one who works in spreading the da'wah with sincerity and determination so as to protect and spread the religion it is as if he is seeing the Prophet ﷺ in one's dream in his true appearance every night and we know that the one who sees Prophet Muhammad ﷺ in his true appearance is guaranteed paradise, subhanAllah. Ibn Hibban narrated in his Sahih that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man salaka tariqan yatlubu fihi ilma sahalallahu bihi sahalallahu lahu bihi tariqan ila al-jannah which means whoever takes the path to seek religious knowledge. Allah facilitates for them a path to paradise. SubhanAllah, the Prophet wasallam, did not say that if a person has a lot of money, a nice car or a big house, that Allah will make the path of paradise easy for them. No, rather he said, وسلم, that Allah makes the path to paradise easier for the one who learns the religious knowledge. This is why Ali radiallahu anhu said, knowledge is better than money. 
Knowledge protects you, whereas you protect your money. Subhanallah. Thereafter, Allah, the creator of everything, the creator of me and you, revealed in the Quran, قُلْ هَلْ نُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِالْأَخْسَرِينَ أَعْمَالًا which means, do you want to know which people are amongst the biggest of losers? This, in, this is in Ayah 103 of Surah Al-Kahf, Surah 18. Do you want to know which people are amongst the biggest of losers? In the next Ayah, we get the answer to this question. الَّذِينَ ضَلَّ سَعْيُهُمْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَهُمْ يَحْسَبُونَ أَنَّهُمْ يُحْسِنُونَ صُنْعًا Which means, it is those who were guided in this life. But thought, it is those who were misguided in this life. But thought they were guided. It is those who were misguided in this life, but thought they were guided. In other words, amongst the biggest of losers are those who were misguided while they think they are following the correct path. These verses show us that just thinking that one is doing good is not enough. Therefore, from these verses, it's clear that for one to be an obedient slave of Allah, it's not enough just to be born to Muslim parents. For one to be safe in the hereafter, it is not enough just to be named Ahmed, Umar, Ali, Fatima, Khadija or the like. For one to acquire paradise, my dearest brothers and sisters, in the hereafter, it's not enough just to want it. Rather, to get paradise in the hereafter, one needs to follow the Prophet wasallam in this life. And to follow the Prophet ﷺ, one needs to know what the Prophet ﷺ told us to do and what he told us not to do. And to know these matters, one needs to learn what the Prophet ﷺ taught. So in other words, for one to be safe, for one to save oneself from a hellfire and acquire paradise, one needs to first learn the religious knowledge and then implement it. My dearest brothers and sisters, I cannot guarantee myself safety on the Day of Judgment and I cannot guarantee it for you. However, I can tell you the way that leads to paradise and saves one from hellfire. This is because Allah Ta'ala revealed in Surah At-Tahreem, Surah 66, Ayah 6. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu qu anfusakum wa ahlikum nara which means, O oh you who believe, protect yourselves and your families from hellfire, which is fueled by people and stones. Al Hakim narrated in his Mustadrak that Ali radiallahu anhu said, the way to protect yourselves and your families from hellfire is to learn oneself and to teach them the religious knowledge. So a person 
protects themselves and their families from hellfire by acquiring the religious knowledge. Now one of the teachers of Imam Abu Hanifa who died, we know Imam Abu Hanifa died 150 after the Hijrah. His teacher was called Apa ibn Abi Rabah. He was a student of the companions. May Allah raise his rank. He explained learning religious knowledge as to learn how to pray, how to fast, how to buy, how to sell, how to marry, and how to divorce. In an authentic hadith, Oh, shall I continue? Okay. Uh, number two, yeah? In an authentic hadith narrated by Al Bayhaqi in Shu'ab al Iman, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Talabu al ilmi faridatun ala kulli muslim, which means seeking the religious knowledge is obligatory upon every Muslim, whether male or female. This means that there is a minimum amount of religious knowledge that every Muslim male and female needs to learn. Why? So as to be safe on the Day of Judgment by learning the personal obligatory knowledge of Islam one is able to discriminate between what is lawful halal and what is unlawful haram, what is valid and what is invalid. So the personal obligatory knowledge is not just for a certain group of people. All of us are in need of this knowledge. Why? So as to be obedient slaves of Allah, who fulfill the obligations and avoid the sins. Whether a person is a doctor or a nurse, a school teacher or a college student, a plumber or a taxi driver, a housewife or a shopkeeper or other than that, one needs to learn the personal obligatory knowledge of the religion so as to be safe in the hereafter. We're going to go for a short break now, my dearest brothers and sisters, and please join me afterwards. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.